My first guest of the live stream studio here at the Expo, and I should know, we're at the Tabletop Expo portion of BevNet Live Winter 2018, which is just crushed right now. There are people all over the place, best-in-class service suppliers uh, from the country are all here. But right in front of me is the most important person of the hour. That's Jim Tonkin, the founder and CEO of Healthy Brand Builders, uh, one of the great people in the beverage industry. Jim, how are you? I'm doing great, Ray. Thank you. Uh, very nice of you to give me that nice introduction. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be nice again, too, because I, I want to uh, share a cocktail with you. I met a wonderful person named Sandra Seltzer yesterday at Beverage School, at our Beverage School session. And she is the maker of this cocktail brand called Encino Lady. And uh, this product is called Mi Corazon. Nice. Uh, this is the flavor, actually. And it's a pomegranate passion fruit uh, mixture with some spice. And she so kindly poured us some beverages. So, cheers. It's almost, it's almost a cocktail hour, right? <laughs> that is, yes, that that's is a uh, spicy, fabulous. That's a spicy cocktail for sure. Corazon, it's, great name. It's yeah, so uh, the definitely brand, spicy. The brand name is Encino Lady. The flavor is Mi Corazon. Once again, this pomegranate passion fruit uh, mixture with a little bit of spice. Really nice. I get the spice. I get the it's spice, very too. spicy. I get the spice. Yeah, and I actually got the pomegranate as well. Fantastic. Thank you All for right. sharing, Ray. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, but Jim, your business is not only. Are you? Have we ever involved in Mixer Brand? Uh, years ago, yeah. Years ago. I did a little work with Tom and Jerry. You probably don't remember them. It was no. Probably before you were born. Okay. <clears throat> Um, in terms of some of the brands you're working with right now, well, let's, let's back up for a second. Healthy brand builders. I mean, you personally have worked on some of the most iconic brands of the last 10 years or so, Zico, Suja. Uh, what do you guys do? Well, we're, um, we're kind of an incubator. So we, we like to take brands on when they're really small, um, try to cradle the executives, um, take a look at their business model and try to understand whether their brand has potential in the market. Is there white space out there? Are they funded correctly? Um, the management team is a really important part of it, and we've talked about that before. Um, I've been doing that for 32 years. So um, it, it's kind of the prelude into what we're going to talk about now uh, in terms of my potentially leaving the consulting space in the next two or three years, uh, moving on to what I think will be my swan song. Really? Yeah. So the new accelerator that you're launching and that you recently announced is going to be your swan song. It is. Um, you know, I, I don't really like to talk about how long I've been in the business, but it's been a long time, Ray. And uh, uh, you know, I go back to the days of the Arnold Palmer Tea, which is one of my early brand successes, which is still doing amazing today. It's an $800 million brand. Um, but having helped a lot of these entrepreneurs over the years has also taken a, a big toll on me. I travel about 300,000 miles a year, wow. 200 room nights in crazy beds and hotels that I may or may not know. Um, and it, it took a toll on my family as well. I, I do remember what my wife looks like, but uh, I'm not home that often. So uh, a good thing is that I'm married to a wonderful woman that really appreciates me, and I've been able to provide well for her and our two boys. Um, but in the end, um, I, I kind of would like to get off this travel uh, track, which is uh, not as fun anymore. As you know, traveling, airline travel isn't as much fun. Uh, hotels aren't as much fun. So my interest is still in giving back to entrepreneurs and trying to help young companies. Um, we're just doing it at a little later stage now uh, with the uh, accelerator than we were in kind of an incubation orientation. So let's talk about this. I mean, I have this business card in front of me. It's a very small business card. Well, I guess it's the normal well, size business card. We have other card. things I can share with you as well. But uh, the business card doesn't really tell the story of what you guys are trying to do. I mean, this is the accelerator has got some big plans, right? We do. Um, as a matter of fact, we launched here at BevNet. And uh, we did that on purpose because I feel a kinship to yeah. this group, uh, to the Cravens, uh, to you and to many of your cohorts here. I've been involved with you since BevNet started. And so when my partner, Joe Jacoba, and I decided that we were going to launch this um, accelerator, I kind of couldn't think of a better place and a better time to do it. it. It was hatched, frankly, five years ago in my mind. And it wasn't until Joe and I ended up having breakfast together in Scottsdale about 11 months ago when he was asking me about some of the brands in our portfolio. And he's an investor. He was looking at potentially trying to put some money in 
maybe even buy one of my brands. Well, that conversation then turned to this concept that I'd had in my brain for five years of developing this accelerator. And so at the end of the breakfast, um, Joe said, well, I really appreciate you sharing your thoughts with me, Jim, but let me get something to read. And he reached down into his briefcase and put a manila envelope across the table, and in it was a business plan, 25 or 30 page PowerPoint, very similar to what I had just described to him. So two and a half months later, after a lot of meetings, conversations that we had together, we crafted the Innovative Brands Accelerator. We then started interviewing C-level executives to come on board with us, uh, VP of Marketing, VP of Sales, VP of Operations. We have an amazing CFO. So we really have all the players around the table now that can help a brand that's doing somewhere between a million or two all the way up to 15 or 20 on the high end move through a process to be better at accounting, better at finance, better at predicting sales uh, activity, working with retailers online, either way, um, understanding the entire supply chain, what's important relative to the um, raw materials, the ingredients and the packaging, all the way through to storage in a 3PL warehouse, for instance. So it's a full 18 month program that we break into three six month sprints, concentrating on, as I mentioned, finance, sales and marketing, and then ops. And each, core, each six month sprint, we focus in different parts of each one of those three areas. Mm -hmm. So by the time we get to the third sprint, we're really preparing a company to go out and raise a substantial amount of capital. Mm -hmm. And they're able to talk the talk and walk the walk. And they have gap light um, financials that due diligence officers in private equity can just tick the box. They're not going to have to recreate the financials again. They'll have a marketing and sales plan that's fully vetted and ready to go to market. Very cool. Uh, I think I got a message from our AV team. Uh, they asked you if you can hold your mic in your left you hand. You bet. I think that's what they said. Oh, you bet. Huh? Yes. Hold, hold, if you can hold your mic in your left hand. Oh, my, I am in my left hand. Oh. Well. <laughs> okay. They want you to hold your mic up a little bit like okay. this. Okay. How's that? Is that better? Uh, I think so. Okay. In the, in the middle, if you can hold it in the middle of the mic. Yes, sir. Ah, there you go. Well okay. done. Well Thanks. done. It's very loud in here. There's a lot of excitement for beverages. I mean, think about what it was like a few years ago. I mean, just a few years ago, it was a much, it felt like a much smaller community. And today, I mean, just like the interest, the excitement about what's happening with entrepreneurial beverage companies is just so amazing. Um, you know, in terms of the evolution of some of the brands that you've worked with, you know, you mentioned Arnold Palmer Tea. Not, you know, the most innovative product, but it had a really iconic uh, name attached to it, Tasty Beverage. But what are some of the functions that are really resonating? What are some of the things that are working on the market right sure, now? Sure, that's a great question. And I think you're, a lot of your attendees are going to find around this hall in here today a lot of new innovative ingredients that are trying to get into beverages. So as you well know, Ray, you've seen a lot of, you, you see the, the showdown here, so you know the kind of beverages that people are looking for, all of the consumers, whether they're millennial or Gen Z, all the way up to my generation, the right. old, old folks. Um, they're looking for nutrition. They want better for you cocktails. They want things that are gonna mean something to them. It's not just about a brand or a container or a package. It's about the nutrition and what you actually get out of a product that you drink. And in all due deference to my friends at Coke and Pepsi and, and uh, Dr. Pepper, et cetera, the days of drinking just plain carbonated soft drinks with high sugar levels and non-nutritive value are gone. Um, it's why all those big companies are buying these relevant brands today that have better for you ingredients, whether it's protein and all sorts of different types of proteins, um, probiotics, uh, prebiotics, those are both for gut health and microbiome betterment. Uh, those, those are topical items today. Uh, things that are better for you uh, on the outside, beauty from within, it's called. Whether you're using it on your, in your hair or your eyebrows or your lip gloss can now be ingested like aloe vera. Um, so I, I think we're in a very, very fun time on the invention uh, platform of, of, and the ingenuity platform uh, around beverage creation and food creation as well. Jim, this has been fantastic. Uh, I'm going to miss you. Don't don't leave the industry. I'm too not soon. going anywhere okay, in the near future, my friend. All right, fair enough. 
Thank you so much for being with us on the live stream studio. Really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, Ray. It's always my pleasure. Keep the cocktails flowing, buddy. Uh, oh, I certainly will. See you next time. All right.